Okay, in this video we're going to discuss graphing linear inequalities in two variables. Alright, so let's make a note. A linear inequality in two variables is an inequality of the form ax plus by is less than or equal to c, where a, b, and c are real numbers and a and b are both not zero. What this really means is a, b, and c are any real numbers, it doesn't matter. But a and b cannot both be zero. One of them can be zero, sure, that's fine, but not a, but both a and b, because then everything would go away. Right? Over there you wouldn't have your, your two variables, x and y. Right? And the other thing I want to mention is this idea of the inequality. I've chosen to use the less than or equal to sign here, but really any of these inequalities um, can be there. You could have less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Any of these four inequalities can be in this spot right here. Right? And that would be a linear inequality in two variables. Right? So before we had equations, so you had ax plus by equals you know, c, but now we've got the four inequalities that can happen. All right? All right, so let's talk about solutions of linear inequalities next. Is for one a solution of the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 1? All right, well, just like before when it was an equation, we can just plug the, the uh, x and y coordinates in and determine if the statement is true or false. So we've got 4 for x, 1 for y. So we're going to go 1 for y is greater than or equal to negative 2 times x is 4. Let's put the 4 in it and then plus 1. And then just do the arithmetic. 1 is greater than or equal to negative 8 plus 1. 1 greater than or equal to negative 7. Is that true or false? That is definitely true. 1 is greater than negative 7. So, yes. 4, 1 is a solution to this particular inequality. All right? But what about, say, negative 1, 0? All right? So now we've got 0 for y and negative 1 for x. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Remember, put the negative 1 in for x. All right, then simplify that up. 0, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Is 0 greater than 3? No, it's not. That's a false statement. So no, negative 1, 0 is not a solution to this inequality. All right, I got one more I want to do. Is negative 3, 7 a uh, solution to this inequality? Well, this time we've got 7 for y and negative 2, x is negative 3, and then plus 1. So we have 7 is greater than or equal to 6 plus 1. So 7 is greater than or equal to 7. Is that a true statement? Yes, yeah, 7 is definitely equal to 7. And since it's greater than or equal to, it can be either one there, uh, this is a true statement. So yes, this is a solution of our inequality. Everybody understand that? All right. If it was strictly just greater than, then no, this would not have been a solution, right? Because 7 is not just greater than 7. But 7 is greater than or equal to 7. All right, let's talk about graphing linear inequality. So we want to graph the inequality x minus y is greater than or equal to 2. Now, the first thing I recommend is to think of this inequality as an equation. Think of it as x minus y equals 2. Think of it as the equation x minus y equals 2. Why? Because we know how to graph x minus y equals 2. Right? So let's graph that first. Uh, so one way to do this is to write this in slope-intercept form. So you'd have negative y equals negative x plus 2. So y equals x minus 2. So that's one way we can do it. That means that the slope is 1 and the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Right, so go plot the y-intercept, 1, 2, 0, negative 2. And since the slope is 1, that's the same thing as 1 over 1. So up 1, so that's positive, and to the right 1, and we got our little point there. Right? And you could do this forever, right? You could go up 1, and then over 1 again, and there's another point that has to be on your line. Up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, so forth and so on. All right, so there, um, there are the points on our line. Now... Uh, to graph this, we would just connect the dots. All right, there's the graph of our line. All right, but that's not what we wanted to graph, right? We wanted to graph x minus y is greater than or equal to 2. And this graph here is x minus y equals 2. All right, so we still have some more work to do. 
Now, this line that you just graphed here separates your plane into two different regions. The region above it, over here, and a region below the line over here. Right? So what we're going to do is take a test point in one of those regions. Now, this test point is an ordered pair that is clearly, and I emphasize clearly, not on your line. It has to be completely above the line, completely below the line. Don't make it so that it's, you know, questionable, right? So, for example, here we see that the origin, and anytime you can take the origin, that's a good thing to take, we see that the origin is clearly above our line here, right? So our test point is going to be 0, 0. All right. Now, what do we do with the test point? We take this test point and we um, plug it back into our original inequality. So, 0 for x, 0 for y, and we determine if we get a true or a false statement. So, we have 0 minus 0 is greater than or equal to 2. 0 is greater than or equal to 2. Is that true or false? Well, that's false. So, what that really means is that any point over here that's on the same side of the line as the origin there, we'll, we'll be making any point, take any point on that side of the line, it's going to make your inequality false. Which means, on the other side of the line, if we take any point over there on the other side of the line, it's going to make your inequality true. Everybody with me on that? All right, so we want to shade the true side. Right? We want to shade the side that, uh, that's true. So that would be this down here. All right? If you take any point in this region down here, it's going to give you a true statement. All right? And if, if uh, you want to test it, just take a point that's down here. Take 1, 2, 3, take 0, negative 3. Plug it in for, for x and y. 0 for x, negative 3 for y. That goes to 3. 3 is greater than 2. That's a true statement. Take any other point down here to help verify that that's always going to be the case. So any point in this shaded region or on our line will make this particular inequality true. All right? Okay, let's let's try another one. All right, 2x plus y is less than 1. All right, so think of it as, an, as the equation, 2x plus y equals 1. Then rewrite it in slope-intercept form. There are other ways to graph the uh, to graph a line, you know, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, whatever. All right, I'm just choosing to write it in slope-intercept form here. 0, 1 would be here for the y-intercept. And then the slope is negative 2. And that's the same thing as negative 2 over 1, right, for the rise over run thing. So we go down 2, 1, 2. And then to the right, always run to the right, 1. Now this time, before we connect the dots, I want to make a point. The previous example had greater than or equal to. This one has strictly just less than. Right? There's no or equal to here. Right? So what that means is, just like it did when we did the uh, you know, graphed inequalities, like uh, x, is gr x is less than 3, we sketched out the line and we said, all right, here's 3, and we shade this way, remember all that? All right, and we said, all right, what about 3? We said, well, 3's not included. And so we'd put like an open circle, or you might put a parenthesis, right, one of those two things, to denote that that particular number is not included. Remember that? Okay, well, we have the same idea, we have the same idea here, only um, we can't put a bunch of parentheses everywhere, right? A bunch of open circles everywhere. What we're going to do is we're going to make our line dashed. Right? And that, because it's dashed, means that the line itself, the points that are on the line itself, are not included. Now, we still have to do about the test point situation. TP, test point. What would be a good test point here? Well, the origin is clearly not on our line. It's clearly below our line here, right? Because we're going through like this, right? So we could take 0, 0 again and substitute that in. So we have. 2 times 0 plus 0 is less than 1. Remember, we're substituting into the original inequality up there. And that means 0 is less than 1. And that is true. So we shade the side that's true. We, so this time we're going to shade the side that our test point was on. So that's the, that's the idea. You think of your inequality as an equation. You graph the line. You determine if the line is going to be solid or dashed. It's solid if the um, line is to be included. So if there's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, then it's a solid line. It's a dashed line if we're using strictly less than or strictly greater than. And then you take a test point, a 
point that's clearly not on your line and substitute it into your original inequality to determine if it gives you a true statement or a false statement. And we want to shade the side that um, is true, the side of the line that's true. All right? Okay, I want to do one more. All right, so let's do this one. So think of it as y equals 3x. So it's already in slope intercept form. The slope is 3 and the y intercept is 0. All right? So we've got 0 going through the origin. And then slope is 3 over 1, so up 3 over 1, plot there. And then you ask, is the line solid or dashed? Well, since it's less than or equal to here, it's the line is solid. All right, now we take a test point. Ah, but this time we can't take the origin, right? So the only time you can't take the origin, really, uh, for, the, for a test point is if your graph goes through the origin, right? So we need to take a different point, a point that's clearly not on the line. Well, 1, 0, this point right here, is clearly not on the line, so we can take that one. It doesn't matter which point you take. Just find a point that's not on the line, right? So I'm taking 1, 0. So then y is 0 x is 1, so 0 is less than or equal to 3. That's true, right? That's true. So we want to shade that side that our test point was on, right? So any point in this shaded region will make this inequality true, right? So that's what we're trying to find. Not too bad? All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.